Foxes are notorious chicken eaters. And for farmers across the United States, these crafty creatures are a constant threat. Each year, millions of chickens are killed by foxes, causing significant economic losses for farmers. However, farmers are now fighting back with various innovative strategies to protect their chickens. Join us as we explore how American farmers deal with millions of invasive foxes. In recent years, foxes have become the biggest threat to U.S. livestock owners. From commercial to residential farms, these foxes attack the chickens, leaving a devastating impact. The attack is so massive that there are currently no figures for the numbers killed or the estimated cost. There are also some cases where chickens are taken from farms. A survey by the GCWT found that, among farmers with free-ranging poultry, half to almost 80% of respondents reported losses in the year leading up to being questioned. The occurrence roughly mirrored estimated fox abundance with the fewest cases in West Norfolk, while the East Midlands had the most. 21 distinct fox species exist worldwide, with only four present in America the red fox, gray fox, arctic fox, and kit fox. Red foxes feature prominent ears, bushy tails, and various coat colors and patterns. Typically reddish-brown above with a whitish or gray chin, chest, and belly, they often have a distinctive white tip on their tail, although it may be black or dark red. The debate among scientists about whether the red fox is native to North America or was introduced by Europeans remains unresolved. Thriving in woodland or forest areas near open spaces like agricultural fields or prairies, red foxes are adept hunters of rodents and rabbits, primarily consuming small mammals. The gray fox in North and Central America has seen its numbers decline due to human habitation and deforestation. Distinguished by silvery gray fur, a black stripe down its tail and a pointed snout, the gray fox lacks black feet but sports a black-tipped seat. Scientists believe it has been present in North America since the mid-Pliocene era, around 3.6 million years ago. Gray foxes are the sole canids with ranges extending throughout North and South America, occupying wooded, rocky regions and bluffs from southern Canada to Venezuela and Colombia. Referred to as tree foxes, they can climb and even sleep in trees. The Arctic fox, also known as the white snow and polar fox, boasts beautiful white fur and is native to Arctic regions well adapted to cold climates. Ranging from Alaska's coastal areas to Canada's eastern border, the Arctic fox utilizes its thick fur for camouflage against snow and ice. Remarkable adaptation features, including metabolic regulation, increased fur thickness in winter, and heat exchange to maintain body temperature, enable them to survive in harsh cold conditions. Arctic foxes possess excellent hearing and a keen sense of smell, enabling them to detect lemmings burrowing under snow and ice. The global population fluctuates around 300,000, dependent on the availability of lemmings for sustenance. The kit fox thrives in warm climates and resides in the arid regions of the southwest United States and Mexico. Its territory spans from eastern Oregon at the northern edge to southern Colorado at the eastern border, encompassing Nevada, Utah, California, Arizona, Texas, and New Mexico. A notable feature of the kit fox is its four-inch long ears, which play a crucial role in dissipating heat. Primarily nocturnal, these foxes sleep during the day's heat and engage in evening hunts. Their carnivorous diet includes rats, insects, birds, reptiles, and fish. 
Unfortunately, the wild population has dwindled to 7,000, facing ongoing habitat loss, fragmentation, and degradation threats. Foxes are particularly attracted to agricultural areas, especially chicken coops, as chickens offer a readily available and accessible prey source. This presents a significant challenge for poultry farmers, resulting in financial losses. Fox predation can result in substantial economic losses for farmers. Since foxes are efficient hunters and can decimate flocks, they directly impact the farmer's livelihood. This loss of livestock can extend beyond immediate economic implications affecting the long-term sustainability of the poultry farm. So how does foxes predation affect the poultry farms in the long run? Let's find out. Foxes have several impacts on U.S. poultry farms and the region at large. Foxes impact natural environments and native species through the predation of small to medium-sized mammals, reptiles, birds, frogs, and insects, as well as the eggs of a range of species. Competition for food and shelter, the spread of weeds through the transport of seeds, and the transmission of parasites and diseases. They are a primary cause for the decline and extinction of many small to medium-sized native rodents and marsupial species. They also impact agricultural production. Their most significant impact on agricultural output is killing livestock, particularly lambs, kid goats, and poultry. Foxes are known to kill more than they need when hunting by caching their kills, resulting in more animals being killed than the fox population might suggest. Foxes are thought to prey on up to 30% of lambs and kids in some areas. There are also sporadic reports of foxes trying their luck with mature sheep, calves, pony foals, and even full-grown cows. Foxes also act as vectors to various diseases and parasites such as parvovirus, canine distemper, leptospirosis, sarcoptic mange, rabies, and hydatid tapeworm. By preying on chickens, they can quickly transfer this disease to them, posing a risk to the overall health of the poultry population. While foxes prefer consuming prey when the opportunity arises, they are recognized as omnivores, indicating their ability to eat a diverse range of foods, including meat and plant matter. Consequently, they may indulge in garden plants, potentially digging holes to access roots and worms beneath the soil. In addition to their varied diet, foxes may also feast on fruits and vegetables, with berries, apples, pears, seeds, grains, and fungi among their favored menu items. This dietary behavior significantly threatens garden harvest and overall garden life. Beyond diseases, the loss of chickens directly affects the farm's profitability reducing the potential yield of eggs and meat. Additionally, the economic impact extends to the costs associated with reinforcing infrastructure to prevent fox intrusion. A Norfolk farmer, Jeremy Buxton, wouldn't entirely forget the harrowing reality that met him on a typical morning at his poultry farm in 2022. About 40 of his 200 free-range hens were killed after the foxes entered the bird's overnight enclosure. Although he said it was an upsetting experience that would significantly damage his farm's egg production, Mr. Buxton said it was all part of the occasionally brutal reality of working alongside nature in the countryside. When I went to feed them first thing, the pen was just littered with dead hens, he said. The foxes had jumped into the pen, slayed the hens, and left them there for dead. It is upsetting and frustrating, but that's farming. He added that losing a fifth of the farm's egg-laying hens means the flock's output will drop by almost 1,000 eggs monthly. Haley Vatican is another farmer whose heart was broken when she saw the feathers of her favorite hens floating across the yard. It's the mental part that's hard, Vatican said of what remains of her flock of 70, which she believes were killed by at least one fox last week. It's all just so sad. Vatican, who runs Moonshine Farm off Alford Road, awoke one morning to carnage after the foxes killed every bird and made off with 15. The foxes had dug under the fence to get into the chicken pen, leaving tufts of fur that had caught the wire. 
Vatikin had spent six years working hard to create this exotic flock of custom hens that lay beautiful colored eggs. It's a passion of hers and she mainly sells eggs. I love these guys, she said of the hens. They're also family. The loss ended her egg sales until she could rebuild the flock. Farmers have employed various strategies to protect their livestock from foxes. Fox uses the cover of hedgerows, tall grass and brush to sneak up and gain access to unsuspecting flocks. To keep their places a low target zone, some farmers mow grass regularly and keep brush cutbacks to reduce the cover foxes use to hide while hunting. Another strategy is fencing. Foxes can dig under, climb over poor fencing and locate and squeeze through gaps in housing. So to protect their chickens against fox attacks, farmers erected a fence of at least 5-6 feet high and a 12 inches trench around the perimeter of the chicken coop and ran with buried wire mesh hardware cloth to prevent a fox from digging under. They employ electric exclusion fencing as a means of protecting against fox intrusions. Nonetheless, the considerable expenses associated with setting up and sustaining fox-proof enclosures restrict their application in the conservation efforts for endangered or threatened species. Additionally, although exclusion fencing effectively serves as a deterrent for foxes, it can negatively impact non-target species by disrupting their dispersion and foraging behaviors, leading to entanglement and electrocution. Moreover, exclusion fencing can pose a substantial hazard to wildlife, particularly during bushfires. An alternative to a fence is the extension of a 12 inches apron out from the perimeter. Although an apron isn't as practical as a fence, it provides some measure of security from digging predators like foxes. Additionally, farmers used the removal method. Farmers can legally take the animal without a permit or special license when foxes become a nuisance in New York State. The fox must be damaging property or threatening safety to be considered a nuisance. Take or taking a nuisance animal means pursuing, shooting, hunting, killing, capturing, trapping, snaring, or performing acts that disturb or worry wildlife. Foxes have a powerful sense of smell, so farmers leverage this attribute to eliminate them from their properties. Certain scents like chili peppers and garlic are used since the foxes dislike them by infusing them in boiling water and spraying them around the garden. Similar to wolves and coyotes, foxes exhibit a strong aversion to the scent of white vinegar. While commonly associated with culinary and household uses such as cooking, baking, cleaning, or laundry, white vinegar has found an unconventional application in predator control. An unusual yet surprisingly effective strategy involves the introduction of urine into fox dens. Due to their keen sense of smell, foxes perceive urine odor as a potential indication that a rival has encroached upon their territory. This olfactory cue prompts them to consider relocating to avoid territorial disputes. However, the sustained efficacy of this method remains uncertain over the long term. There is also another method called fox digging or fox baiting. It's the practice of using dogs to flush out and brutally kill foxes that have fled from their aggressors by hiding underground in holes or badger sets. Perpetrators, known as terrier men, will send in dogs, usually miniature terriers, to locate the foxes in the spot, attack them, and typically kill them. If the fox hasn't already been killed, it will be dragged out of the hole, placed in a bag, and taken to another location where another dog will savagely attack the fox until its eventual death. This method is controversial, so it didn't witness much adoption. Many farmers use guardian dogs to help deter foxes from approaching their livestock. These dogs, such as Great Pyrenees and Anatolian Shepherds, are specially bred and trained to live alongside their flock and defend them from predators. 
However, the effectiveness of this method depends on training and the individual disposition of the dog. Furthermore, various livestock species such as mules and donkeys, as well as llamas and alpacas, can serve as highly efficient guardians for livestock, exhibiting both aggression and protectiveness that effectively deter foxes. Alpacas, llamas, and donkeys present distinct advantages over guard dogs regarding minimal supervision requirements and similar management practices to those applied to protected livestock. In contrast, guard dogs necessitate extensive training and supervision to prevent potential harm to livestock and wildlife and prevent them from straying onto neighboring properties. Owners must ensure dogs receive adequate nourishment, water, and regular attention to shield them from adverse environmental conditions, diseases, injuries, and distress. Lethal baiting stands out as the most widely acknowledged method of fox control. Nevertheless, the humaneness of various poisons varies. Depending on the specific poison employed, targeted animals may endure prolonged pain and suffering before succumbing to death. Moreover, non-target animals, including native species, working dogs, and livestock, face exposure to poisons either by consuming baits intended for pest animals or by scavenging tissues from a poisoned animal. In some cases, farmers have also used scare devices, such as propane cannons and lights, to scare away foxes. One such light product is called the Fox Lights. It is an innovative technology that utilizes intermittent lights to simulate human presence and create an impression that someone is patrolling the area with a flashlight, thereby deterring nocturnal predators like foxes. Let's find out. Now, what are the ethical and sustainable methods available for curbing foxes' predation? We'll discuss this in a moment. While controlling fox populations may be necessary to protect livestock, there are also ethical and environmental considerations to be taken into account by farmers. There is a prevailing expectation within the realm of pest management that efforts should prioritize minimizing animal suffering. To align with this ethical stance, the control programs must employ the most humane methods to achieve their objectives. A vital aspect of this approach involves exploring and implementing non-lethal procedures for controlling predators, a perspective endorsed by certain researchers in the field. By emphasizing the ethical treatment of animals and advocating for alternatives to lethal measures, the aim is to strike a balance between effective pest control and compassionate treatment of the creatures involved. One of them is habitat modification. Farmers should avoid feeding and watering pets outdoors. If this is not possible, they should restrict the amounts pets consume in a single feeding. Proper disposal of garbage or other food sources that attract foxes should take place. Foxes are often attracted to rodents living in barns, crawl spaces, sheds, and garages. Control of rodents may be necessary to deter foxes. Compost should be secured to prevent access to foxes and other wildlife. Window wells deeper than 12 inches should be covered to avoid wildlife entrapment. Removal of carcasses makes livestock production areas less attractive. Trapping is also an ethical and effective method, but it depends on the type of trap. Traps that contain an animal, such as cage traps or box traps, cause fewer injuries than traps that restrain an animal, like leg hold traps. Animals ensnared in cage traps generally face minimal risk of significant injuries unless they engage in frantic attempts to break free. Non-target animals captured in cage traps can typically be released without harm. In stark contrast, leg hold traps pose a considerable threat inflicting severe injuries on both intended and unintended victims. These injuries may include swelling and lacerations to the foot due to the intense pressure exerted by the trap jaws and potential limb dislocation if the trapped animal vigorously tries to extricate itself. The stark contrast in the potential harm between cage and leg hold traps underscores the importance of more humane trapping methods to mitigate the adverse impact on wildlife. 
Foxes can also injure their feet and legs by chewing on the captured limb, and their teeth, lips, and gums by nibbling at the trap jaws. For leg hold traps to be considered suitable for use, they must be equipped with rubber-like padding on each jaw. This padding serves the crucial function of cushioning the initial impact and providing the necessary friction to prevent the captured leg from sliding along or escaping the jaws. An additional type of trap strictly prohibited is the tooth steel jaw trap, which inflicts significant injury, pain, and distress on the trapped animals. The gradual phasing out of toothed steel jaw traps is underway across all states and territories. As a more humane alternative to toothed steel jawed traps, treadle snares are available. However, it is essential to note that they pose challenges, being difficult to set, bulky to carry, and occasionally missing target animals. In addition to the immediate physical injuries caused by traps, animals can also suffer from exposure, thirst, starvation, shock, capture myopathy, and predation. Therefore, traps must be strategically placed in suitable areas protected from extreme weather conditions and undergo daily inspections. It is crucial to avoid setting traps where there is a risk of entanglement with fences or thick vegetation, as this can lead to further injury to the captured animals. Approaching trapped animals requires a careful and quiet approach to minimize panic, stress, and the risk of injury. Foxes, when caught in traps, should be dispatched quickly and humanely with a single rifle shot to the brain. In the case of lactating vixens, efforts should be made to locate dependent cubs and euthanize them swiftly and humanely. Non-target animals that are not severely injured should be released at the trap site, while those that are damaged but potentially responsive to veterinary treatment should receive prompt care. Severely injured non-target animals must be euthanized quickly and humanely. Acknowledging that all traps carry the potential to cause injury and some level of suffering, their use is mandated only in situations where no practical alternative exists. An alternative and humane method for fox destruction involves fumigating fox natal dens. This method effectively introduces high carbon monoxide CO concentrations into the hole. The cubs must be older than four weeks and fully susceptible to the effects of CO. The fumigant is colorless and odorless, causing oxygen depletion and leading to unconsciousness and death without pain or discernible discomfort. It is essential to note that other fumigants, such as chloropicrin and phosphine, are not registered for use against foxes and must be avoided. These fumigants, especially chloropicrin, are deemed inhumane as they subject animals to prolonged suffering before death. Utilizing shooting as a humane approach to fox control involves the expertise of skilled and responsible sharpshooters who ensure that the fox is visible within a suitable range and that the appropriate firearm, ammunition, and shot placement are employed. In cases where a fox is wounded, prompt and humane measures must be taken to locate and dispatch the animal efficiently. In instances where lactating vixens are targeted, it is imperative to make reasonable efforts to locate and swiftly dispatch dependent cubs in a humane manner. This ensures that the impact on the overall fox population is managed responsibly and with due consideration for the animal's welfare. An alternative method for widespread fox control is fertility control which presents a potential humane and targeted solution that doesn't involve lethal means. However, as of now, no effective fertility control agents are available for broad-scale use against foxes. Exploring such options is essential for developing more compassionate and species-specific approaches to managing fox populations without resorting to lethal measures. Researchers and practitioners are actively working towards discovering and implementing effective fertility control methods as part of a comprehensive and ethical approach to wildlife management. While protecting livestock from predators like foxes is essential, balancing these methods with wildlife conservation is crucial. 
Foxes play an indispensable role in the ecosystem, controlling populations of rodents and other pests. In addition, many wildlife species, such as birds and insects, depend on the habitat created by foxes. Therefore, finding solutions that allow for coexistence rather than eradication is essential. For this reason, using non-lethal methods to deter foxes and establishing protected areas for livestock and wildlife is vital. Wondering what innovative strategies farmers are employing to rid their poultry farms of this persistent threat? Watch on to find out. Innovative solutions to fox challenges in farming are emerging as farmers seek ways to protect their livestock without harming the environment or wildlife. One innovative way farmers are mitigating the problem of night predators is to easily install automatic chicken coop door openers. An automatic coop door is a door that is added to a coop that will automatically open in the morning and close the cage at night. It will remain closed all night, be strong enough to keep predators out, and ensure chickens won't be harmed when the door closes if they're standing in the way. These automated doors are meant to save the chicken keeper time and help if they are away and want their flock free-ranging or out on the run during the day. They are only triggered by the sunlight and early daylight hours. There are many automatic coop doors on the market, and many of these choices have a light sensor and timed automatic doors that can be safely locked. The integrated timer option is for those who prefer complete control of their chicken's coop door instead of relying on the light sensors. An automatic chicken coop door can be powered by electrical, plug-in battery, the most common, or solar power, comes with a solar panel. Another innovative method of protecting chickens from foxes adopted by farmers is a chicken coop camera. A chicken coop camera can tell farmers if any predators are hanging around their coop, and some can even alert them if they are trying to get in so they can keep the chickens safe from active threats during their most vulnerable time. Coop cameras are a great way to watch chickens so their owners will know their potential hazards and can intervene when necessary. There are different types of cameras for chicken coops. Motion detection cameras work by sensing any motion that occurs, typically at night, using infrared light. Once any motion is detected in their sight range, they turn on and begin recording, like a trail camera. Otherwise, they are connected to a Wi-Fi signal and send a real-time alert to the user's smart device, phone, computer, tablet, or smart speaker. Regardless of their make, once a person or animal walks by the camera, the motion triggers the power to come on and either records them or sends the user a live feed. However, they are not used as an alerting system, but rather as an informational system, letting farmers know if and what kind of animal is hanging around their coop. Plus, they are usually set up on a trail, not near a Wi-Fi signal. Therefore, most can't alert them in real time. A surveillance camera system is meant to give a homeowner a better idea of what is happening on their property and around their house or garage. These systems are intended to provide the ultimate protection to a homeowner. These typically come in the form of an outdoor wireless security camera. This system also works very well as a coop camera. The third one is the chicken coop Wi-Fi camera. Many indoor and outdoor camera options come with Wi-Fi capabilities, including motion sensor cameras and surveillance camera systems. With a Wi-Fi camera, livestock owners can log in to the system they have set up via their computer, tablet, phone, or smart device, and see in real time what is happening. This is an excellent option, as farmers can check in on their coops from a different location if they are away or on vacation, or if they hear something at night and want to see what it is. Many of these wireless camera choices make them easily attachable to an existing chicken coop. AA batteries also power them. But not all. Some are powered by solar and will require solar panels. The other chicken coop camera must be wired into an electric source, either hardwired to an electrical panel or plugged into an outdoor outlet. Additionally, farmers can use motion-activated alarms to protect their chickens. 
Motion-activated alarm is different from a motion detection camera in that the former is only designed to sound alert when detecting a movement. It cannot record the event like a motion detection camera. A motion-activated alarm that produces a loud sound is most effective in scaring predators away. When confronted by a loud alarm sound, animals get spooked easily. Farmers have traditionally tried to separate livestock and wildlife. Wild animals can spread disease and prey upon or outcompete domesticated animals. The reigning ideology has built sturdy fences to keep livestock and nature out. However, there is limited land to fence in. As the human population skyrockets, farmland is encroaching on wild animal territories more and more, putting native species and livestock in contact. The only solution is to encourage coexistence between wildlife and livestock. By doing so, farmers can benefit from ecotourism and enhanced biodiversity. Farmers adapt to this change by employing prevention methods for their livestock against wildlife. For example, by rounding livestock into pens at night and keeping livestock guardian animals, predators are more effectively deterred, eradicating the shooting option.